Cicada Night Adventures in Self Education. I finally heard that fancy long sound that cicadas make. I have been waiting forever. In the years that I was settling down in New York, they were up and about, and it was really nice to hear them again. It has been a big day for my inventions as well. I've been able to minimize my MP3 player to a very reasonable size, though the smaller battery runs out in hours, not days. But that is to be expected. I have to tidy up some software. I have to rewrite monitoring of Bluetooth devices because the files that represent them on Linux are actually deleted when the Bluetooth device goes to sleep. So I have to close the file handle and go back into waiting for input device mode, which I recently added in. It's all just like three lines of code or something. At the gym, I realized that all my songs have to come in three different speeds. 140 beats per minute for lateral footwork, where I twist my feet left and right, which isn't as fast as the classical dance moves that usually go back and forth. 150 beats per minute, which should be my standard 2.5 hour workout, but isn't as I halved my workout time due to the pandemic. And then the upper speed of 160, maybe 170 beats per minute, which is for dancing without dumbbells. I'm still working on my posture, so right now the little dumbbells and the mask are making breathing more difficult. I wanted to spend this year mostly on cardio anyways. And my goodness, just a couple of weeks ago I had to look back on my bicycle to check for traffic, and instead of getting a 120 degree view, I caught 190 degrees in the corner of my eye, so cardio is working out for me. I just tried it again standing up with my feet pointed forward. I can see 190 degrees behind me by turning my knee, torso, upper body and head. This can't be normal. But my music player, you see, is now capable of manipulating the speed of music, giving me rest, proper workout or high speed workout. This is not a computation performed live, by the way. The little Raspberry Pi Zero computer can't handle that. But a desktop computer can process probably 100 songs in probably 20 minutes or so. Which brings me to my song composition. This is another thing that I figured out today. I am able to enrich the background of the songs I compose by actually adding standard C-like noise and then adding some reverb and filtering it down a little bit. This is very strange for me. I expected that background noise is best created with blended drums or bass guitar, but standard wet noise works very well. I first noticed use of standard noise in a remake of Alan Walker's Faded. It is referred to as uplifter and downlifter. And though those samples are richer and actually fade in, fade out, as far as my lightweight EDM song programming goes, noise is noise. I made a sample project, not really a song, that shows how the noise fills in the background and how I go about creating noise in the first place. I'll play that for you now. So listen to this. This is the pure noise that I am starting with. <laughs> This is me applying some filters to focus on different ranges within the frequency of sound. So this is just noise. It's basically background noise that you want to have in your song so that there's a background to it, so that it doesn't sound artificial. And I did it. I did it by just mangling noise and turning all the knobs to a maximum. So now I can add actual instruments.
I should note that these audio experiments of mine are best heard either through a car stereo system or headphones or studio headphones um, because they have deep bass and a very wide range of sound. They don't really come out when played on a laptop. Those speakers are not meant for this kind of sound. I left my favorite discovery and milestone for last, because as small as my Raspberry Pi MP3 player is, it needs a purpose-made case that can house the smaller battery. Such a case will have to take under account all the ports and the customizable push button that comes with the battery module which in the current Mark II prototype serves as the play and shuffle button, so I don't even need the Bluetooth keyboard. Double press being a stop button and a long press being a sleep button. And then every time you press play, it just shuffles to a different song. This is nothing I can create out of stock aluminium project boxes or enclosures. And while this takes me to the 3D printed case realms, the first thing that comes to my mind is a CNC milling machine. I'm just crazy about aluminium and how it dissipates heat and how it looks. But this is something that is many months, maybe years away. At first, I need to learn how to use open source CNC software. I just want to see simulated tool paths on my screen. I already have an SVG model of the case, there are many of them online, but also, at the same time, I know a huge tangent when I see one. So really, I have built my MP3 player invention. I even went from car player to workout player with variable music speeds. But I got stopped by the world of 3D printers and CNC milling machines, as that is a whole new adventure for another year. It is great though. I went to the local hardware store today. I held aluminium stock in my hands. I searched for a nibbling tool, sheet metal tools. I traced the micro USB ports of an existing case I have. And I stared intently at my Dremel tool. To me, all of this represents another semester of self-education. There are dozens of new things to learn here. It is how it has always worked for me. Finish the little MP3 player and a great new world of CNC milling and 3D printing opens its gateways to me. It is really hard to start watching lectures or tutorials about programming CNC machinery until there is that need to finish a cool little project. There is no education like self-education. It is never about finishing some one thing, but about all the branching things that we visit and learn along the way.